My name is Paul Rogers. I'm an uh, independent developer in Portland. And I also have recently, in the very early stages of creating a startup for myself around a security uh, application or security framework for mobile applications. This talk is going to be about something that I've created because I, I, a number of times I've needed random strings. And we often, you know, it, 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 what I hope to have you take away from this is, one is looking at a common need in a slightly different way, and actually, more importantly, in a explicitly specified way in which I think I'm going to show you that you think you might know what you're doing at times. You say, I just want a random string, you do this. I'm going to try to show you that maybe sometimes you don't quite have it down to the explicit specificity that you want. Okay. When do we need, whoa, when do we need random strings? Lots of places. These are, these are ones that I've needed in the last six months, right? User IDs, session IDs, uh, some random names so that when I upload uh, images to a website, uh, nonces, I uh, played with React once and, and it wanted me to have com uh, unique component IDs, uh, et cetera. So the question is how do we, if you say, okay, I, I, I've seen these two, I, I've done this, I've needed a random string. Well, how did you generate a random string? Well, the, the most probable solution, and the one you will see if you do any types of stack overflow or any, any um, um, is this guy. Right. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's, there's no real, real um, clever code in here at all, so I can, I can explain what's going on. This is the way most people do random strings. They define a function, give it a length, give it some character set, and then use math.random to generate character, I mean, pardon me, to generate indexes into that character set and just string them together however many times uh, based on that length. Great, I've got a random string. Seems like I'm done. That's the, I, again, that's the way most people do it. And if we look at that, oops, we get some random strings. In this case, I'm generating random strings that are four hexadecimals long. And I can just, great, that works fine. Whoa, competition. Now I want to look at, that's the common solution, but I'm going to show you in this talk that that solution is not good for any of those that I just sort of crossed out. Database ID, session IDs, up, upload. We use it all the time for these, but it's really not the right, right way to approach those problems. And in fact, it's even worse. For the three that I've, this, this is horrible, you can't read those, but for session IDs, for nonces, and for uh, initial user passwords, it's not only not the really best way to go about it, it's the flat wrong way to go about it. You do not want to use that last solution for these. So I kind of want to get into, I'm going to, the, the, the primary reason you don't want to use it for those ones that I, I, I made red is because math.random is, is a pseudo random number generator. It's a pseudo random number generators are deterministic. Does everyone understand the difference between a, a that and a, and a cryptographically strong random number generator? Because if you do, then already you know. You shouldn't be using that math.random. You should be using some type of, of, of cryptographically strong random number generator. I'm not going to go through that example. Okay. So why was it? I, I also grade them out. Right? So even if you use a cryptograph, cryptographically strong random number generator, I'm going to argue that, that that still wouldn't be a good solution. And the primary reason is because when you're generating random strings, what you're really after is uniqueness. You're not after random strings. You're after something that says, I know as I generate these, each one of them will be unique. That's what you really were after. Right? There's two ways to get unique, uh, unique strings. The two, right? Deterministic generation, counters. You see that all the time in databases. Just keep a counter in each next, next ID, you just up the counter. Right? The problem with that, it's often not acceptable. It's certainly not for session IDs. If you do that for session IDs, some, you need to be summarily shocked. Right? So it's not good for a lot of different uh, solutions, but 
The other way you could do it is say, okay, I will generate random strings, but each time I generate one, I'll just keep it, and then each time I generate another one, I'll compare it to all the ones I generated before. Again, onerous, not really a good idea. So what do we really do? If we're explicit about what we really do in this is we don't do either one of those. We use probabilistic uniqueness. We say, I will implicitly accept some small risk of a repeat. That's what that solution that I just showed you, there was nothing in that solution that couldn't have generated two of the same exact IDs when I ran it. Okay? So the question is then, it's if we're implicitly accepting a small risk of a repeat, how do we explicitly specify that risk? And that's what this talk is going to be about. And we're going to get to a point where uh, I'm going to go through some math, I'll wave my hands at it, but the real thing is that, it's going to, that at the end of this, I've got a, a library that makes it just as easy to use as that random string we had before, but it'll be explicit. Okay? To do how, how do we specify that risk, I'm going to start with the birthday problem. Okay? How many of you are not familiar, because if, if you're familiar with that, I'll just skip over this quickly. How many of you are not familiar with the idea of the birthday problem, which is this? You have a whole group of people outside. All of you leave the room. And each time one of you come in, you announce your birthday and you sit down. And we keep doing that until somebody comes in and announces a birthday that somebody who's already sitting down. And the question is, how many people would you expect to have to come through the door before you would get a collision, get a repeated birthday? Now, most people are surprised when they learn the answer. 23. Right? There's 365 birthdays, but only in, in, in average, 23, 23 is about what it takes to get somebody coming in who already and, and announce a birthday. It's already. Well, how does that affect us? It's, it's all about a collision. Whoops. And what I'm going to look at here is just, I'm going to run a, um, this thing I wrote called coll Collision Hex. It's generating those exact hex strings that I did before. I generate using that, that common solution. Those hex strings were four, de four hex long, four characters long, hexadecimal. There's a possibility of 65,500 of those things. How many times, how many of those do you think I could generate before I got a, a repeat? I don't know what, I mean, there's, 60, there's 65,500 of them. I should be able to do it for a while, right? 321. Now that, that was just doing a Monte Carlo with 10,000 things, but that's, that's roughly at about 300. That might surprise you. And it should surprise you if you're using character, if all you're doing is using random string and saying, here's the length and you don't know that that's that what to expect, that's why we're here. That's why I'm here, I'm sorry, is to try to help you understand that that's not the way to do it. Yeah. Is that generated using uh, the, the built-in random? That's generated using math.random, but in this case, it, it, that, that won't matter, right? The math.random, is, is it, the fact that it's deterministic in this case doesn't change this probability. Yeah. Okay. So, what we want to do is, how do we specify the risk? What we want to do is, we want to, we want to calculate the probability of collision in some number of strings. Okay? So there's three things that I have pl playing against each, each other. The number of possible strings, in this case with the, with the four deaths or hexadecimal, it was 65,500. The number of strings that I'm going to generate, if I'm only generating 100, I might be okay. If I'm generating 500, I'm screwed. Okay? and the collision risk factor that I'm willing to accept. If you Google something like uh, hash collision, and in particular there's a, uh, my favorite one's uh, pressing.com's uh, explanation of this, you can barely see that equation, but there's an equation that will relate those three values. Okay? It's fine, it's, uh, again, I apologize for the, 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 you can't see it very well, but it's, it's a math equation, great. I've got some equation that will, uh, that will, uh, that will relate these things. Okay? And it's just by doing an analysis based on the birthday problem. So before I get to that, that said that the to total number of strings, now I'm gonna take a quick tangent and talk about entropy for a moment. Then I'm gonna come back to that slide I had and show you how, how we're gonna use this idea of entropy to clean up that last equation and, and we'll be, voila. Okay. 
So entropy is is well, entropy is the uh, uh, is a measure of information. I'm not going to go through this. We're going to talk about we're going to use Shannon entropy. You can't see this very well, but it doesn't really matter. Um, what what we are really interested in is that there's this idea of entropy that can measure how random a, the, uh, how random the information in a string is or in a signal. And it, it was started by uh, Claude Shannon years ago, and we've got an equation for it. Okay. I can, I can take that idea and I can look at, say, flip a coin in times. If I do that and I use the symbols H and T, and I get some example where I flip... I'm apparently not supposed to go over there, so I'll point from here. <laughs> and, I, and I flip a coin six times, I generate six bits of entropy. Okay? And if you, need some, if you really actually need some randomness, that's a fair way to do it. Flip a coin six times. Another way to do it is to roll in dice. You roll in each die, each die based on the uh, Shannon entropy equation, each die, each roll has a 2.58. Uh, each die as it lands generates 2.58 bits of entropy. I've got five of them, so I get 12 and a half bits of entropy when I roll that die. So if I needed entropy, I could do it this way. Nobody does it this way, but you could. But here's the, here's the problem with just saying, oh, I, 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 okay, I can look at strings and I know how much entropy they've got. Here I've got an example where I say, I've got a hex string and it's six hexadecimals de long. It should have 24 bits of entropy, okay? I've got a random string that's six, right? But here's my problem. Suppose this is the way that I generated that string. Okay, if you can see this, it says math string, create math random. If it's less than a half, use that string. If it's greater than a half, use that other string. How much entropy do I have? One bit. I have one bit of entropy. The problem here is that the, 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 the key takeaway on this is that the process that generates the randomness generates the entropy. You cannot look at a string and say, I'm going to calculate how much entropy this has got. You can't do it. All you can do is say, I have to know the, what generated the randomness to get to that entropy. Right? And that's why a lot of those, uh, if you look at something called, mine's called entropy string. If you look at string entropy, I'll tell you, look at it and throw it away because it's absolutely wrong because it makes the wrong assumptions based on, on something like this. Right? A string can only carry or represent entropy. So uh, we'll see a little, I'll talk a little more about that in a moment. But the, uh, so strings can only carry multiples of, of the characters, uh, entropy of multiples of the characters in them. And the symbols used are arbitrary. I can use these two symbols or I can use H and T. And either way, I'm generating one bit of entropy per time I'm generating one of those things. So you can't look at the string and say, oh, that, there, that, and calculate the amount of entropy. You have to know the process that generates the randomness. Furthermore, another common mistake you'll see surrounding entropy is this. Suppose I, I, I did actually generate one of my four digit uh, hexadecimal strings randomly. I've got 16 bits of entropy. And I think, okay, I'm pretty clever. I'm going to take the SHA of that, SHA1 of that, and now look at how many, di how many uh, characters I've got. Wow, I got a lot, right? Well, I did it again. If I take, well, back up, if I take the, the, if I look at the entropy of that long string, it's still 16 because the entropy is based upon the, what generated the randomness, not on the characters used. And that's a common, common mistake that people think they can take the hash of something and create more entropy. You can't. In general, what that really shows up is when people look at key stretching. I think they, well, if, I, if I stretch a password using key stretching, I, I increase its entropy. No, you don't. Okay? You can increase what's called the guessing entropy. I'm not going to go over that, but you cannot create the ran you cannot uh, create more randomness by key stretching. Okay? So now I'm, that was our little quick on the entropy. Now I'm going to show how we're going to use that in this equation that, that came from the birthday paradox. M number of strings uh, possible. I'm generating K of those, and this is my risk factor. We're going to switch that instead and say. We're going to take the number of strings to be 2 to the n, where n is our entropy. Okay? We're, going to, we're going to calculate what that entropy needs to be. Okay? And so I, I start with that same equation. I do some of my math magic on it, and I come out with this, this equation. The, most, the thing here is that it, it relates the entropy to the number of strings that I'm going to generate to my appetite for risk. 
And once I've done that, I can get to, I hope you can see this because now this is actually uh, um, using this library called Entropy, Entropy String. It's a node, uh, a node library. We're going to start with new random. And then I'm going to say the bits. It's going to calculate the bits of entropy I need. I give it the total number of strings I want and my appetite for risk. And then I hand that to a thing. I say, create a random string of, of that much entropy. And it spits out for me. Let's, well, let's run that. Whoa. So it spits out this string for me. Now, again, notice I did not specify the string length because I don't need to know what the string length is. All I need to know is what is the, the, the amount of strings I want and what is my probability that I can live with on a repeat. I tell it those two things, it, it generates the string length for me. Okay. Likewise, I can, there, there are different, uh, now this is just using the actual library. I'll show you a couple more. Um, by default, it uses some 32-character uh, set, but you can change that if you want. You could say, well, what I wanted to do instead is to use a, a char set 16, and then it will generate a hex. And in this case, I, I changed it. I want hex character strings with a one in a trillion chance of a, repeat, of a repeat. You can't read it there, but it's in 10 million strings. Oh, wow. So I want 10 million strings. I don't want any repeats with a, uh, with a chance of one in, one in a trillion. I hand those values to entropy, it gives me back the number of bits. I say, give me a string, and there it is. Again, I don't even care what the string length is. I just know that, that I, can, I can generate 10, uh, 10, million, or 10 billion of these with a one in a trillion chance of repeat. Okay. I can also, uh, in this case, I used uh, the, uh, here I can pass in my own characters. So if you say, I've got 16 characters, and I want these 16 characters, you can pass that in. Uh, to try to make it uh, uh, flexible in that fashion. Uh, here's a, an example where there, it has certain common scenarios built in. In this case, I want an OWASP session ID, so I just say, hey, random, give me a session ID, and it spits out something that looks like this. So this, this, this is a valid session ID. It's 128 bits of, uh, of entropy. I can look for tokens. And in this case, I'm using a token, a 256-bit token. So that the idea there is that you, you can come at it from two perspectives. You can say, somebody told me how many bits I need. Or you can say, all right, I want this many strings, and I have this appetite for risk. You can use it either way. Okay? Somebody tells you, 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 you you're doing uh, session IDs, then you can just say, OK, then I, I know I need 128 bits. So the takeaway, don't specify randomness using string length. String length is a byproduct. It's not the goal you're after. You don't care how long the string is. Don't require true uniqueness. Nobody here does it, but just don't. You don't need to. You'll do absolutely fine with probabilistic uniqueness. But if you're going to be that way, if you're going to do that instead of implicitly doing it, do it explicitly. Probab probabilistic uniqueness requires specified risk, so we'll specify that risk as a one in, one in N chance of generating a repeat. That specifies the entropy. I say that I, I want to specify, I want to explicitly specify the risk of a repeat and the total number of strings. And I don't care what the, what the characters are. You can choose them whatever you want, but it, that, that's immaterial. Right? Use entropy string, it makes all of this easy for you. That's just the end. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there. That's, so the, the takeaway then is it's just as easy to use as random string, give it a length. But instead, you know what you're doing. That's the key. Right, thanks. Oh, yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Paul? And if you wouldn't mind kind of summarizing the questions yeah. so we can catch Sure. Uh, anybody have any questions for Paul? Nick raised his hand first and then asked, How do you feel about giving you ID here on version 4? Can I show a quick slide? Sure. Yeah. Um, this is uh, 
running UU, this, this is exactly a UUID. So a UUID looks like this. How much randomness is there in a UUID? Not 128 bits, which a lot of people think there is. There's 122 bits of randomness in a, in a UUID. My problem with them is first is this. That length is 36 characters long and I get 122 bits of, of randomness. If I just use hex instead, I'd go down to 31 characters. If I use base 32, I'd go down to 21. That's not right. Forget that, that's the base 30, this is wrong. It's, it's, if I use base 64 is the one I really want to get to, I get 21. So I can get, I think there, it's not that UUIDs are bad, it's just they're overkill. I, they're, they're using 36 characters when I only need 21. And that's my, my general feel for them. They're the lazy way to do it, and that's cool. You've got, you got a library that does it for you. But now you've got a library that does it for you just as easily, but gives you back strings that are 21 characters instead of 36. Yeah. Yeah, so um, at the beginning of the talk, there was a list of all these things you yeah. should do. Right. So what, is the, what should my tolerance be for a session ID? Well, now session IDs are easy because OWASP has already declared they should be 128 bits. And so you say, okay, great, I'll just go with that. All right? That's fine. Uh, tokens, you could, they're, they're, the risk is totally your, your de declaration. Now, are there best practices? Sure. Oh, like I say, OWASP is 128. But in general, I think this is, this is also useful for when you say, I'm playing with React. I'm playing with React and using these component IDs, and you know what the, the tutorial showed me? It used UUIDs. Okay, I had 122 bits when I really needed strings about this long, because I'm only gonna have five or six of these things, right? So it, to me, it's about being explicit and then, and then just declaring the risk. If you're, if you're risk averse, put a trillion in there. Put 10 trillion in there. I mean, put a gazillion in, right? It'll generate them. You're just gonna get longer and longer and longer strings, but at least you're explicit now. You're not saying, well, I'm just generating a string that's this long and I have no idea what the risk of repeat is, which most, that, that's what the first solution did. So this solution is, is, is explicit and it's completely up to you what that risk is. But there is a risk and that's the other thing is face up, there is a risk. And I think often we use that, that random string solution, the first one I talked about, and didn't understand there was even a risk at all, but there was. Right. Yeah. Thank you.